Look at that. I think I see the first ship. Affirmative, we've located the first ship. From the gold that was lost more than a century ago to two highly committed men finding their way to the treasure, let's have a look at what an Oak Island researcher discovered at the bottom of Lake Michigan. Think of a story that goes back more than 150 years and is about lost Confederate gold that went missing after the Civil War. About eight years ago, Kevin Dixtra and Frederick J. Monroe began their search. They did this by scanning the bottom of Lake Michigan many times off the coast of Frankfort, Michigan. They were sure that the answer to this age-old puzzle was somewhere below the surface of the water. The story of Lake Michigan has been told for many years. I think we're on it. Everything is working according to plan. All the resources are great. So I'm very excited. Monroe heard it for the last time in 1972. A lighthouse keeper had heard that off the coast of Frankfurt, there was a boxcar that sank with $2 million worth of gold bullion in it. This story comes from a statement that George Alexander Abbott made on his deathbed. Abbott died in Muskegon, Michigan in 1921. In the year 2023, a researcher from Oak Island has found new wealth at the bottom of Lake Michigan. In this video, let's look into this more. When we looked back at the mysteries of Lake Michigan eight years ago, Dixtra and Monroe were completely sure that the Confederate gold story was true. So this here could very well potentially be a debris field. You got the Grand Tetons over yeah, there. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of good spikes there. They think that these boxcars from the late 1800s were pushed off of ferries and into Lake Michigan to lighten the load when the weather was bad. There's more to this story, though. In another part, there is talk of a boat with a bedroom that has a safe full of gold, silver, and jewelry. While that wasn't their main goal, it's possible that that's what they found on one of their recent trips. On their last pass, they saw something amazing, a picture on their sonar that looked like a ship sitting upright on the lake floor. They had to jump 120 feet into the 37 degree water because of this. As they went down, they saw a perfectly kept ship that looked like it might have been a tugboat and was about 70 feet long. On the deck, they could still see the windlass, the mast, and even a hatch cover. In fact, Dixtra saw a clear center. It was the back door to the house and the safe next to it that really interested them. The safe was covered in zebra mussels. For 40 years, they've been trying to figure out what happened. Could this be the key? Oh, Mari, look straight ahead. It's big. Let's go check it out. Oh, yeah. Dixtra and Monroe were looking at this shipwreck that had not been touched and they couldn't help but think that it had something to do with the missing box cars. The puzzle pieces looked like they were 100% aligned. The mystery wasn't going to be easy to solve though. They told the state historian about the safe, but it's still not clear if it contains gold, silver, or jewels. It might get them closer to the box cars if it does. It's still not clear what role the state of Michigan played in investigating and digging up the safe who kept the story secret for years. Marty Legina, Maddie Blake, and their hardworking team in Fairport, Michigan, didn't start their big journey until 2023. It was a day full of excitement and anticipation. They were looking for gold from the Civil War that was thought to be hidden at the bottom of Lake Michigan. Their goal was nothing short of amazing. Maddie, you know, I hate to be cliche, buddy, but today's the day. Well, today's the day we're going to get in that water, I hope, at least. I hope. I hope he's got, like, a, you know, grade-A target. The group was ready to go on an amazing trip beneath the waves when they heard the call of the sea. Martin and Maddie said hello to Doug Gossage, who is great at scanning pictures, and Bob Kreipke, who is in charge of the team. They spent the whole day before their dive searching the bottom of the lake with a detector for things they might be able to find on their dive. Couple of, there's a couple of good spikes there. Now, obviously, I think that is our best spot. They were most hopeful about some potential hits that were found close to Poverty Island's north end. They thought these hits could lead them to the wreck of the Captain Lawrence and the long-lost Civil War treasure. As Doug and Bob looked over the scan results together, they couldn't wait to tell each other what they had found. It was clear that they might find something, and the excitement in the group was contagious. At the center of their operation was Poverty Island, and the scan results showed that there might be a debris field below the surface. The Grand Tetons, which showed up as spikes in the data, were a sign that big things were nearby. 
These things could be valuable loot or important parts of the ship. Marty was excited to find out what kinds of secrets they were going to find. Based on the information they had, Doug told them to expect to find planking and probably some pins. On the other hand, the thought of getting to the area the Grand Tetons indicated was thrilling because it meant they might find important ship supplies and maybe even the gold they were looking for. The people in the group were sure that they had all the proof they needed to confirm the dive. The possible value of the gold was the 0.45 billion reasons they were here, according to Bob. 0.45 billion reasons? That's right. That's what we came here for, right? Yeah, that's right. Bob. Oh, that's why we're here. <laughs> he said that this was what had brought them to this point. Their goal was very clear, and they were excited to go on a journey into the unknown. The team was getting ready to dive, and you could feel the excitement in the air. They were trying to get to the scan area that had the most promising data, and they had a thorough plan for how to do it. Using different kinds of communication gear, Marty would stay on the surface and plan the action. Diver Luke Clyburn would join Maddie in the water. He would have a video camera and a JW Fisher's Pulse 8X underwater metal detector with him. Luke was very important in this story. The metal detector could look for iron items up to 200 feet deep, which let him look at any trash they found and decide what it was. This tool was very important for figuring out if any of the finds were connected to Captain Lawrence, or if they were just random pieces of junk. Everyone on the team became more and more excited as they got closer to the diving spot. Marty steered the boat and tied it down so that Luke and Maddie wouldn't move away while they got ready to jump in. Even though their goal was very clear, the marine environment was full of secrets, and they were about to look into one of the most mysterious ones. For Marty, the phrase, it's time to dig, often meant the same thing on Oak Island, but today it meant something different. It was time to really look, really dig, and maybe find something that no one had ever thought of before. Doug, do you think you're, we're in the right spot? Go, let's go a little deeper, okay? According to today's money, they thought the gold they were looking for was worth more than $400 million. Even so, the group knew how important it was to have proof and be correct. As they got closer to where they were going to dive, they saw that the ground below looked like it might be dangerous. Things that look level on the outside may hide important hints and old things just a few inches below the surface. The divers would have to be very careful as they went through this dangerous area. Every minute that Luke and Maddie spent in the cave, they got closer and closer to the main goal of their journey. A radio link with Marty let them talk about their search of the underwater landscape as they looked for any clues that could lead them to Captain Lawrence. In any way, their quest was not without problems. The world below the waves was very big and cruel, and it was hard to see. They had to use their training, knowledge, and the tools they had on hand to get through the flooded area and look into what was going on. As they went deeper into the world of water, they were filled with awe and respect. The history of the past was lost in the depths of the lake, and each new find could change the course of history. The level of dedication and determination shown by the crew was unwavering. The underwater metal detector was their friend, because it could find ferrous targets, even if they were hidden deep. Luke looked through the ruins they had found to see if there were any markings that could help him figure out if it was connected to Captain Lawrence. Everything that was looked at had the potential to make big steps forward. We start making our way back up that ledge from 50 feet up, and I see something, and I point to it. What's that? What's that? Well, that's something it looks like. When Marty got back to the surface, he kept an eye on his crew and felt the weight of his duty on him. He knew that the road ahead would be hard and dangerous, but he also knew that there were a lot of good things that could come from it. It's impossible to overstate how important it was for him to make sure they were safe and lead them through the dive. As Luke and Maddie continued to explore the watery world, they couldn't help but feel more and more excited. The underwater world was very protective of its secrets, and the explorers were thrilled at the thought of finding artifacts from shipwrecks. That which they discovered looked like a dead eye, which is a round piece of wood with holes used in building ships. They got more and more excited as they found more pieces of the shipwreck. What? Come on. With the metal rod running through it. 100% that's old shipwreck material. The 
the pieces they found gave them a good idea of where Captain Lawrence might still be hidden. With each new find, they got closer to their goal of getting back the gold that was stolen during the Civil War. So far, the team had only scratched the top of the mystery. The underwater world was so big, but they didn't change their minds about their goal. They would keep exploring, go deeper into their dives, and keep looking for the prize that they had been trying to find for such a long time, but hadn't been able to find. As the group made their way back to the boat and thought about all they had done, they felt a rush of happiness. They found the remains of a shipwreck, which gave them a clear link to the past and might lead them to the treasure they were looking for. They got one step closer to finding out the truth when the world under the water told them some of its secret facts. The amount of skill and dedication they showed during the dive was clear. Marty, Luke, Maddie, Doug, and Bob made up the perfect team. Each person brought something unique to the table in the form of their experience and knowledge. They were on a dangerous and uncertain trip to find the gold that was stolen during the Civil War. But they were also full of hope and the chance that they might make a discovery that would go down in history was near. The team knew their job wasn't even close to being done when they got back to the surface. The world below the waves was full of secrets and tales that were just waiting to be found. Their diving, exploring, and search for Captain Lawrence and the wealth it was thought to have held would go on. It wasn't just about how much the gold might be worth. It was also about what the gold meant in terms of history, the stories it might hold, and the impact it could leave behind. The group was determined to find the truth. They also shed light on a part of history that no one knew about before and made a finding that people would talk about for years to come.